Hello and welcome to a very casual March reading wrap up. March was my birthday month and so I kind of read whatever I fancied whenever I fancied it from, from a list that I'd kind of decided were my priorities for the month. So starting off with a few statistics, I read 11 books in the month of March, which is pretty good. And I actually read a ton of pages this month. I read 4,369 pages. I hauled 22 books, which is not great. I'll link my haul up there for you in case you haven't seen it yet. And I only read four books this month by BIPOC authors, which is not good enough and I don't think that my stat on that is going to be good enough in April either so I'm going to have to really work on that in May and the ongoing months but it's it's a continued effort in my life to make sure that I am reading diverse titles. So let's get into the books that I actually read in the month of March. So the first one was The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst, which is book one in the Queens of Renthia series. It's quite a short adult epic fantasy story and, I th and all of the books in the series are kind of this length, which is really nice and quite different actually for fantasy, but it was a really enjoyable story. It's set in a forest as the cover might suggest to you and it's actually kind of brutal it's much more brutal than I was anticipating it being so in this land the forest is full of like sprites and things and they can be quite destructive they don't want to share their forests with humans and the queen is the most powerful magic user and she uses her magic to control these sprites and things so that they do not cause mass devastation but something is going wrong and every once in a while said devastation is happening and we also are kind of so so that's kind of like the mystery element I guess to the story like what is happening why is it happening all that kind of thing and then we also follow our protagonist Delena to magic school which is always a fun kind of setting and she she does have magic but hers works very differently to that of her colleagues and isn't quite as strong. Uh, there, there are loads of really fun tropes in here as well along with the magic school setting and this mysterious element there's also a really good uh, mentor trope in here as well and I just really I really enjoyed this one it was a nice easy read I enjoyed the brutality the author is not afraid of getting her hands dirty as it were and I actually really liked that about it so yeah I have since purchased the second and third books in this series and I do hope to read them in the near future the next book I read was The Last Bear by Hannah Gold which as you'll see is a very cute little middle grade book with very lovely foiling on the dust jacket. This one as I said is a middle grade book and it's kind of a contemporary actually. So it follows the protagonist and her dad and the protagonist's name is April as they go and carry out some, well the dad carries out some meteorological research on Bear Island which used to be an island that had lots of bears on it but now there are no bears on it because the ice caps have melted to such an extent that the bears can no longer reach this island but of course April discovers there is one last bear on the island and it's about her developing a relationship with this bear and helping him to get back to the rest of the bears and it's a really nice kind of environmental middle grade story which I quite liked. It's very short, very easy to read, nothing kind of 
amazing in terms of writing because it is aimed at a middle grade audience and it is a contemporary so it is quite straightforward but even though I don't normally like reading contemporary middle grade I did quite enjoy this one because of that message about the environment and protecting the environment and, and that even one person can make a difference no matter how small so I quite liked that about this and I do definitely recommend it for middle grade readers especially of course. From there I read Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman and this one was a difficult one so this follows Caden who is struggling with his mental health and is having he's experiencing psychosis and so we are following his time in a psychiatric facility and it's it's difficult to talk about this one without giving too much away but we kind of we're seeing his psychosis as it appears to him this one be really careful if you want to pick this one up it is really very dark in terms of its mental health themes it's really difficult to read it's not a happy story it's quite traumatic in some ways it is also reflective of Neil Schusterman's experience of his son suffering with psychosis and having to go to a psychiatric facility I think he wrote this with the assistance of his son and there are kind of drawings in here that his son actually did whilst whilst he was unwell um I don't know if you can see that so yeah it's a really difficult read I feel like maybe I wasn't quite in the right headspace to read it myself when I did but once I was in it I kind of I wanted to see what was happening to Caden and follow his story through this isn't kind of plot focused or I mean it's character focused but in a very different way to what you'd anticipate so I do I do recommend this book but I also say proceed with caution make sure you check the trigger warnings and consider whether you are in a good mental spot to read a book like this because it is it is quite tough I feel like I'm not really liking the lighting of this there we go that's better so after reading Challenger Deep I needed something a little bit joyful to read after that so I read I'll Be The One by Lila Lee which is a kind of k-pop competition based story but the protagonist is plus size and so she faces quite a lot of discrimination within that that world of k-pop and I mean I don't I don't really know anything about k-pop but I have heard that I mean just in general Korean beauty standards are quite unattainable for the average person and that can be really difficult within that society but I really enjoyed this book it was young adult so very easy and light to read the themes were fun to read about the protagonist was enjoyable there was a little bit of romance but nothing major and it was just what I needed actually after reading Challenge Deep it was just fun light easy to read and I enjoyed I enjoyed myself reading this one from there I bumped a book onto my TBR, I'll Be The One was also bumped onto my TBR and that was A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth which is urban fae fantasy set in Toronto which is a nice and different setting, there are some really great characters in this one I really enjoyed the setup for this story I enjoyed all of the characters there's kind of an adventurous 
mystery type plot line, there's magic to be discovered, there's great queerness in here and I mean the, the fey politics are always a little bit difficult for me to wrap my mind around but it didn't detract too much from my enjoyment of this one and I'm really looking forward to the sequels in this series because I feel like the relationships have so much more growth to go through and I really look forward to seeing that. I feel like this is going to be one of those series where the relationships between the characters is what really carries the series and I love that. I love character relationships and development of relationships in series and so I'm really looking forward to that element of these sequels and I did really enjoy reading this book. I just remembered that I was meant to be, well I was planning to talk to you about the audiobooks that I've listened to as I was going through. So I listened to audiobooks for all of these actually. So the audiobook for the Queen of Blood I really enjoyed. Same with the Last Bear really short audiobook as well. I quite enjoyed that. The audiobook for Challenger Deep had some interesting voice acting going on in it but actually I feel like that broke a little bit of the tension that existed within this book and so was actually helpful and I definitely would recommend listening to the audiobook of this one if you have that option available to you. I'll be the one I just listened to on audio. I didn't do the full immersion reading experience with that one. It was just an audiobook. I liked it. Uh, yeah, it, it was good. I read and listened to this one and again really liked the audiobook. It really helped with all of the fantasy names which is always a draw for listening to fantasy books I find. The one thing I found annoying about this audiobook, which is what reminded me that I wanted to be talking about the audiobooks, is that one of the perspectives is Nausicaa and that's her name and that is a, it, it derives from a, a Greek, well it derives from Latin originally but it's, it's a Greek name and it's also a name that comes up in Japan as well you might have heard of Norsica of the Valley of the Wind which is a Ghibli film which also has an associated manga but the audiobook pronounced it Norsicaea which is clearly wrong and was very annoying <laughs> so that's just a warning I'm not saying don't listen to the audiobook because of that because clearly I listened to the audiobook and I enjoyed the majority of it but that was one weird thing that did bother me. I then reread The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson and again I listened to this one on audio narrated by Michael Kramer who is fantastic. This is my third reread of this book I think. I'm not 100% sure. I thoroughly enjoyed it though. I read it in like three days. It's a 700 or something page book. 25 or something hour audiobook and I just I flew through it because I love the story and I'm so familiar with it and I just wanted to be reading it like all the time so so yeah I reread that one on audio thoroughly enjoyed it massively recommend the audiobooks for this series and recommend the series in general I'm not going to tell you what it's about because I've already probably told you umpteen times what this series is about but thoroughly enjoyed my reread. I also then read physically uh, Touch of Power by Maria V. Schneider. So there isn't an audiobook of this so I just read this one physically. The Chronicles of Ixia series by Maria V. Schneider is one of my favourite series of all time. I love it. I've reread it multiple times. I'm planning to reread it again pretty soon but I've always wanted to try reading more of Maria's works and so I finally got around to reading this one which has been on my physical TBR since December of 2019 and I thoroughly enjoyed myself reading this. It follows Avery who is the last living healer, magical healer, following a plague 
that struck this land and killed thousands and then and the healers for some reason didn't help with this plague and so they've kind of been hunted into near extinction with Avery being the last and I'm not going to say any more about what it's about but in true Maria V Schneider style the characters in this are fantastic, the relationships between the characters in this are fantastic, she is not afraid to break your heart with the storylines and cause you to be just incredibly invested in each and every one of the characters even when their priorities are very different from each other and you just you you think to yourself how is it going to work out that everyone's going to get what they want because I want everyone to get what they want but it's not possible and I I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this I cannot wait to continue on with this series I thought it was fantastic and yeah, I, I should really just read more of Maria's books because clearly I really enjoy her writing style, her storytelling, her characters, her worlds, her magic systems. It was all just great and I really, really enjoyed reading this book. Then I listened to Get A Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert which I have heard so much buzz about on the booktonet so I finally decided to pick this one up. I'd put myself on the hold list and the audiobook came through for me so I decided to listen to it and I listened to it very quickly. As with most romances it usually takes me about a day or so to read them because they're so quick and easy to read and for the most part I enjoyed it. I found some of the inevitable conflict annoying and I didn't love the ending of this one but I enjoyed the relationship that was at the centre of this romance story. I particularly liked the male lead, Red. I found him an interesting character to read about. It was also quite nice that we got his perspective which doesn't often happen in romance stories so that was quite nice but I have to say I don't necessarily understand all of the buzz about this particular book. I think it's one of those situations where it's just been hyped so much that it couldn't possibly live up to all of that hype, like not that it was a bad book or that I didn't enjoy it, I just don't necessarily understand why people have gone wild for this book and also not really smutty. There's like a couple of sex scenes so not really as smutty as people make it out to be. So that's just a, an FYI. As for the audiobook itself I thought that was really good, it was really interesting to have a Yorkshire accent in an audiobook for once. I've not really heard that before so that was interesting and I did quite enjoy the narration of that one. From there I listened to The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty which is the final book in the David Bad trilogy and I'm not going to talk about that at length here because I did do a whole live show talking about this trilogy so I will link that up above for you if you want to hear thoughts about that then you can go ahead and watch that video. And then I read and listened to Law by Alexandra Bracken and I did a whole reading vlog for this one which I will link up there for you so I'm not going to talk about this one either because I've already spoken about this one at length as well so I don't want to bore you. It's actually a pretty short vlog which is I'm quite proud of that uh, so if you want to hear my thoughts about this one then you can go and watch that video and then finally I listened to Biased by Dr Jennifer Eberhardt which is a non-fiction book about Bias and it looks at it from a psychological, sociological perspective. The kind of the first portion of the book looks at bias within 
the police in particular and then the end of the book kind of really focuses on bias within education and so I found this book really interesting because I, I enjoy hearing about kind of the the psychology of, of why people might behave in certain ways and I found it I found it really really interesting and it also helps you to kind of better understand how and where your biases might come from and that's helpful because if you can identify that then you can you can work on it more easily I feel like so for example I know that if I am walking down the street and there is a group of teenage boys walking towards me I will feel really uncomfortable and I might kind of use avoidance tactics to get away from them. That's because when I was in school I was regularly bullied by teenage boys so I am now, I now have that mental connection between teenage boys equals dangerous, frightening, causes anxiety and so I want to avoid that situation but that is me showing bias towards a group of people based on something that happened to me when I was younger. And so because I've, you know, I, I, the book helped me to identify that and because of that I can now consciously work on not continuing with that pattern of behaviour and that that bias and acknowledging, you know, if I'm walking down the street and I'm feeling uncomfortable because there's a group of teenage boys coming towards me, I can I can acknowledge like that's just that that's not because these particular boys have done anything or will do anything. It is just something that exists in my mind and that can help me to, to move past it. So I, I really found this book to be very interesting and helpful and informative and I highly recommend it. I listened to the audio which was narrated by Dr Eberhardt herself which I think is always nice when when an author narrates their own book because you then kind of especially with non-fiction you can pick up on their their emphasis better because they're adding that themselves so I definitely recommend the audiobook but I just recommend this book generally I think that it's really really interesting and really great and yeah I, I don't know if I want to say I enjoyed the book I feel like it's difficult to say that you enjoyed a non-fiction book but I did find reading it very interesting and beneficial to me so those were all the books that I read in March I feel like my wrap-ups are getting very long again and I don't know how you feel about that so let me know would it be better if I kind of maybe do like a mid-month wrap up or something I don't know let me let me know what you let me know what you think because I feel like these are usually around half an hour long which is quite a long is quite a long video so let me know what you think about that. Don't forget to check out Pondful Books down in my description bar, which is my small business with my sister, where you request a book from us, you give us a prompt, and we will recommend a book especially for you and send it to you either on its own or with some fun goodies for a cosy night in of reading. And that's it for this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks, bye!